You may know what a photo grid does when you use it in the studio, but what happens outdoors? I'm going to show you on today's episode of Ask David Bergman. Hey there, everybody. Welcome back. Here I am, as always, answering your photography questions right here on Adorama TV. If you've got a photo question, you know what to do by now. You just go to askdavidbergman.com and submit that form on the site. I just might pick your question to answer right here on a future show. Remember that if you want to join me backstage at a concert, all you got to do is check out my Shoot From The Pit live concert photography workshops. I'm around the world this year. I just added a few North American stadium dates, but they're selling out really fast, so jump on it if you want in. I'm also bringing this once in a lifetime photo event to New Zealand, Australia, and all around Europe. It's going to be a really special year. Just go to shootfromthepit.com to sign up and get on my free email list while you're there to be notified of future events. All right, today's question was sent in by Chester K and he wants to know, I understand that using a grid on modifiers in a studio setting can reduce light spilling onto the background and surrounding surfaces. But what about in an outdoor setting if there are no walls near the subject? Does the grid make any difference? Thanks Chester, that's actually a great question. Now first I'm gonna back up and talk about grids. Many light modifiers have the option of adding a grid. Sometimes they're included when you buy the, the modifier and sometimes you have to buy them separately. Soft boxes take what's called an egg crate grid, like this one. This is an egg crate grid for the Westcott Rapid Box Switch Octa S. And this just attaches to this light here. By the way, Jennifer's here. Say hi, Jennifer. We'll get to her in a minute. But this just attaches onto this light here. And, uh, but sometimes with bigger modifiers, it uses Velcro all around to prevent light from leaking outside of the edges of that. Now, when you add a grid to your light modifier, what it does is it narrows the spread of light. And I can actually demonstrate this pretty clearly. If I'm photographing you right here from this camera with this light, this modifier, when light comes out of here, every place you see white, there's going to be light coming out. So when I start to turn it at an angle like this, you're still seeing some white from this angle, right? No matter which way I turn it until I go way far over there. But if I'm at this angle here, you're still going to see some white. So light is still going to be hitting in that direction. However, when I take this grid and I put it around here like so, and I get this on this modifier, something interesting is going to happen. As soon as that's on there, and I raise it up now because it just fell over a tad, um, when I'm pointed straight at this camera again, you're still seeing plenty of white light when it's aimed in that direction. Let's get the whole thing covered there. You're still seeing plenty of white light. However, now when I start to turn it this direction, immediately you can see that you lose some of that light because now you're only seeing the black part. You're not seeing the white. So looks like I didn't get this all the way around, but there you go. So that's how the grid works because by once I get to that angle, instead of that light now hitting straight in that direction, it's being blocked by that grid. So that's how the grid works. Now, here's a shot of the spread pattern of the Octa S without a grid on it and then a shot of it with the grid. And you can clearly see what the difference is, how it changes that spread of light. Now, there are also grids available for other modifiers like beauty dishes and reflectors. The Westcott 70 inch uh, reflector takes a metal honeycomb grid and it comes with the 60 and the 30 degree grids and you can see what they do to the light. The tighter the honeycomb on the grid, the narrower the light is gonna spread. So why would you do all this? Now that you know how it works, why would you do it? Well, the main reason is for control. With a smaller spread of light, you can actually put the light right where you want it and keep it from going uh, where you don't. Now, I am fortunate to have Jennifer here in the studio today with me. Thank you so much for being here um, so that I can show you what effect the grid has on a real shoot. So I am using here, this is the Westcott FJ200. Um, nice little portable flash, uh, really easy to use in the studio and on location. And as I said, I've got the Octa S, which is the small size softbox here. Camera wise, I'm using the Canon R5. This is, I love this camera, the Canon R5 with a 24-70 lens. And I've got the Westcott FJX3M. That's the flash trigger, the wireless flash trigger on top. Um, exposure setting wise, I'm at 100 ISO, 200th of a second at 2.8. Now, first I'm going to take this grid off of here because that's what I'm going to shoot first. So let's get this off and just we'll put that on the side there. And just to prove now that all the light I'm going to be shooting with is going to be coming from the strobes. I'm going to shoot first one frame without the flash on. I'm only using this one light, but right now it's off. We just have our little bit of daylight coming in. 200, 280, 100. All right, and this is just an empty frame. Okay, and you can see that's a black frame. There's nothing there, right? So now I'm going to turn on the, my wireless trigger. 
And my flash power, by the way, is at, what am I at now? I'm at 30 second power. So very low power, we're close in here. I'm gonna raise this up so we can get some traditional Rembrandt lighting. So that's about 45 degrees over and 45 degrees up. Should give us some nice light for a headshot. Uh, Jennifer is a model, she's beautiful, she knows what she's doing. So I'm just gonna shoot a couple of frames of her just to give you an idea of how this looks without the grid. All right, here we go. I'm gonna do four or five frames, Jennifer. Perfect, great, and just move around for me a little bit. Oh, that's nice, good. Two more, and last one, perfect. And you can see what that's doing, right? It's beautiful, I've got this nice backdrop back there. It's being lit a little bit by this light. Now, I've only got the one light firing, but with no grid on it, what's happening is, the light is bouncing all over the place. My studio here is surrounded, I've got white walls in all directions, so the light is bouncing everywhere. Um, also, as I was demonstrating before, the light is coming out and hitting in all directions without any control. It's just kind of going everywhere. So it's bouncing everywhere. So it's lighting the background a little bit. She's about probably five or six feet in front of that background, but it is getting some light on that background. Also on her face, you can see it's filling in some of the shadows. It's a softer light because of the light that's bouncing all over the place. Let me do a couple full body pictures as well. I'm gonna back up here just a tad, just to get some full body. So we can see where the light is hitting. And last one, perfect. And you can see it's giving me good coverage, even just from this one light that's kind of high, because the light is bouncing everywhere, I'm getting full coverage on the body. It's a little darker at her lower body, but still getting a lot of coverage. So that's without the grid. Now, let's put the grid on and see how that changes. I'm gonna bring this down so I can reach it. The wireless triggers are amazing because you don't have to get to the light. However, you can't put the grid on unless you bring it down. So let me put this on here really quickly. I love the way this Octa S1 is designed. It just slips around the outside. That was easy. And now I'm going to bring this back up to the same position. And let's make the same picture. Now, something to be aware of. When you put a grid on, you do lose a little bit of light. So I've estimated about a stop of light. That looks a little high. So I'm going to bring this back down just a tad. So it's about the same height that it was at. And again, just from experience, I know I lose about a stop of light. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change my, I'm going to go from 30 second power. I'm going to bring it up to uh, 16th power. So one click there. Now I'm at 16th power. I have one, I've added one extra stop of light. The exposure on her face should be exactly the same. But now the only difference is I'm using the grid. So let's take a few frames again. And perfect. All right. A few more like this. Great. We'll do some tight headshots here. Amazing. And then I'm going to do some full body. Perfect. Perfect. And last one. Done. Look at the difference in the background, right? That's the first thing you notice is that a lot less light is hitting that background. Now, why is that? It's because this light is now being controlled at a certain angle and it's not bouncing everywhere in this room, right? So what does that allow me to do? Well, first of all, it allows me to control the brightness or the darkness of the background. Also, if I wanted to add another light in the background, maybe change the color, if I wanted to put some gels back there or do anything, if I have too much light, um, you know, sort of messing up that background, then it would wash out and it would be hard to put some color on there. Also, look at the light on her face. It's a little bit harder light because I'm not getting all the softness from those shadows being filled in from all the light that's hitting around the room. So it is a little bit of a harder light. It's not a huge difference, but if your room is even smaller than this, if you're in a very small studio, it is gonna make a big difference. Also, if we look at the full body, you can see the light is really not hitting her lower body as much as it was before because it's really concentrated on her upper body so it makes a big difference. Most of what I've done here in the studio so far has to do with light bouncing around inside my studio space with these white walls all over the place but if you remember a few minutes ago Chester actually asked about using a grid outdoors so what I did was a little earlier I took Jennifer outside to show what would happen. Here's an image of her with the same setup that we have here first without the grid it's pretty much what you'd expect from a traditional softbox portrait outside. I'm using the strobe to overpower the daylight just a bit so that you can still see where the shadows are. If you're curious, I was at 200 F8 at ISO 100 and the flash was at quarter power. Then I added the grid. I had to change my flash power to half power because remember, you lose a stop of light when you add the grid, but otherwise my settings are all the same. 
As Chester mentioned, there are no walls to bounce the light around, so the shadows are pretty much identical in both photos. The light without the grid is a bit harder than it is in the studio because it's not bouncing back off the white walls and filling in those shadows. So when I added the grid, the light quality really doesn't change that much, if at all. So is there any reason to use a grid outside? Well, yes, there is. Let's look at the full body photos. Without the grid, just like in the studio, the light covers more area and lights her up pretty much from head to toe. But when I add the grid, it limits the spread. And since I'm using a small softbox aimed kind of high, the light doesn't cover her lower body as much. Now, whether or not you want to do that is totally a creative choice that's completely up to you. But the grid gives you more control over where the light falls if you want it hitting a smaller part of your subject. So there you go, Chester. I hope that helps clear that up. What do you all do? Do you use grids to control your light or do you just prefer to bounce all over the place and cover more of your subject? Let me know down in the comments below. Huge thanks to Jennifer for coming in the studio here today, putting up with me. I'm gonna put a link to her social media down in the description below, so make sure you go follow her. If you like this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And of course, if you're not already a subscriber to the Adorama YouTube channel, go ahead and hit that button and click the little bell icon so you'll be notified when new shows come out all week long from my friends here at Adorama TV. Hope to see you in person at one of my Shoot From The Pit workshops around the world this year. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll be back next time with another question right here on Ask David Bergman.